Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here doing my review for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. You have to excuse the really crappy setup right now. I just moved into my new apartment, so this is like the super temporary setup with all my crap just sprawled everywhere. Um, going into this, I was pretty excited. I really enjoyed the first one. Um, I know a lot of people like split down the middle for that, or mostly people didn't really like it. I enjoyed it. I liked the whimsy of it. I liked the Fantastic Beasts element more than the uh, Grindelwald, you know, war element to it, even though I thought that was entertaining. But going into this one, I was actually super excited. I was like, all right, well, I know going into it, it's not going to be the Fantastic Beasts element. They're just, you know, using the name because they were like, well, we're just going to make up a movie name and just use it off, you know, base it off of something already in the Harry Potter universe. Um, but this one I was looking forward to because I was like, all right, well, it's the Crimes of Grindelwald. Going into it, we know that this is like really the real big setup. Like they already said when the first movie came, I was like, there's going to be five movies in this. So I was like, all right, stretching it already but going into this with the trailers and stuff i was like it's going to be dark they're going you know considering a lot of people like one of the greatest things about the harry potter films is that as people watch them they grew up so as they grew up the stories grew up with them like they got darker as they went along and i thought okay a lot of people already into it are older so going into the first one it's a you know bit lighter but it has the darker elements and you know it's pulling on stories that were referenced but not seen um you know seen before in the movies or in reference too much you know within the in the books um but then going into this one it's like all right that's the whole point of it is to go into like those dark elements it's the crimes of grindelwald that's like the whole point things are getting crazy and then going into the movie and seeing the movie it was like things aren't really that crazy it was like it was intense in the beginning um there will be spoilers in this but i'll let you guys know when i'm actually getting to those elements but it's like all right it's intense like there are a couple of scenes here but it's not super crazy it's more like leading into once again the really big excuse me crazy setup for the dramatic elements there's some dark stuff in this for sure but i don't know it just wasn't like what i was kind of hoping for and there are some elements in this um as far as just the story in general i still like the first one more just because like there's stuff in this there's literally an element and if you've seen it you already you probably already know what i'm about to say but honestly if you hate exposition dumps boy oh boy you're not gonna enjoy the last like 15 minutes like it hits that last 15 minute mark and there's some great stuff in the end of this movie for sure there's a really great uh speech from grindelwald that's just entertaining to watch but before that cool speech moment and like the actual like end of the movie there is some stuff where it's like check this out and it is just this this and this and honestly they explain so much i think i got more confused just as i was watching i was like I, I guess that's what they were talking about like they they were explaining like full stuff where it was like all right that got referenced once or twice but they didn't have a moment where it was like it, personally for me maybe it's because I was kind of just going through it but I feel like yeah they have these moments where like this thing is referenced but I was like I felt like it wasn't referenced enough before them getting to like the full-on explanation like there were just some names that were dropped and I was like okay I kind of get this I kind of got that but then they did like the full exposition dump and every single thing was all at one time. And I was like, whoa, I feel more confused now because they explained literally everything all at once. And it was like, I should have known 100%. And it was like, I, I got it once I thought about it more. But I was just like, wow, they did like a giant exposition dump. And it was crazy. But before that, it was just like, you know, here's a little reference. Here's a little reference. And I was like, they probably should have just chopped up this exposition throughout the film instead of just like hitting it it was like one full chapter of exposition that's what it would have been in the book um but it was crazy but you know the rest of the film i, I did still enjoy personally speaking um going into this i was excited and then like right before when i was buying my ticket i was worried because like people were saying like this is like the worst thing ever or, or not the worst thing ever but it was like this is the worst out of all the you know wizarding world movies and i was just like oh crap people already didn't really like the first one i liked it but i was like people already didn't like the first one and they're like hating this so i was i was really worried but i was like Right, it's not that bad i still like the first one more and like i said i think it's the fantastic beast element which is still in here but obviously it's not fantastic beasts and you know where to find them it's just a part of it um and it's you know the crimes of grindelwald and stuff like that so it has that darker tone but not as much as i was expecting and there's definitely some dark stuff in here too like there's a specific dark moment it's like super you know it's ultimate villain dark i guess is the best way to really put it and i like the way the scene was handled too it was just kind of just like a, it was kind of a stoic quiet dark scene um and of course i'll get into specifics um as far as spoilers but yeah going into it i was just like all right you know this is kind of cool you know this stuff happens here it starts off with the decent action sequence there's like 
three action sequences in the whole movie and maybe that was another thing that kind of bored me like just a little bit i like the fact that they used magic so much in the first movie i was like i felt like it was all over the effing place they were apparating left they apparated like 90 percent of that first movie and i was like that's super a super simple thing is them teleporting but it's fun i was like it's fun to watch they're jumping all over the place and there's a specific scene with uh dumbledore where that happens quite a bit and it's actually the one that you see in the trailer where they're jumping all over the place but I was like, man, they don't really do a lot of magical stuff. It, like, the magical stuff happens, but I felt like it it's the most basic of magical stuff. Like, when they do things, like, when they show in the first movie where um, they go to, like, the Ministry of Magic. It's like, oh, you have to go through this door. And you see that it, like, warps it and you go, you're, like, in a different dimension. It was like that. That was, like, I felt like that was most of the magic we saw was them just going to magical places. Like, oh, this is hidden here and this is hidden there. And they apparate a little bit and they, you know, there are some spells in the movie. But I was like, man, I felt like they just did not do a ton. And it was just weird going through it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I was like, man, I feel like it's kind of slow paced and not in a super entertaining way because they you know with the giant exposition dump especially at the end they definitely could have put some extra hints in throughout and just like cut little portions here and there where i was like they're kind of just talking and i don't really care that much they don't really do much um for people that are big fans nagini of course is in this they do nothing with her she's legitimately pointless to even have in the film outside of she has a slight connection um to one of the characters and they don't they bond but it's kind of just like a meh sort of bond really he was like man this life sucks it does bond that was really what it was in the movie and like nothing happened maybe she'll have a big part because i i think she's gonna be in the next film kind of how things played out i assume she's gonna be in it um i could be wrong but i just feel like with the way they're kind of doing certain stuff i was like i guess they're full-on introducing new characters that are staying throughout the series now and I was just like, I guess, I hope that's the case, because otherwise this just really sucks, because um, they did nothing with her in this movie. Um, but yeah, like I, I didn't enjoy this one as much as the first one. I still thought it was okay. Um, but yeah, I, I actually liked the first one more, and I didn't hate it or anything like that. But for me personally, I enjoyed the first one more, because I liked the comedy to it. The And I would enjoy this one more. Because I wanted the darker elements fast. I was like, I was totally fine with that. That's what made me so excited. But I felt like they didn't handle them as well as I would have liked. Like, there were, the scenes that I liked, I thought were well done. But, I don't know. I guess it was just the tension of the film was, like, one person, legitimately, like, maybe one to ten percent of what I thought the tension was truly going to be. Like, it just wasn't there like I was actually expecting it to be. It was like, if this was meant to be, like, one movie this movie would have been the first 30 minutes, I feel. Like, no joke. I feel like this would have been, like, the first 30 minutes of the movie, and then the rest, like, the last hour of it would have been everything that I was looking forward to, which is going to be now three full movies, uh, which could be good. That could totally work. I mean, it's a grandiose battle, you know, that's done throughout history within the Harry Potter universe. So it's fine that they separated within, th you know, throughout the next three films, and it's you know, five films total, it technically, you know, it's really just four, like, they kind of just had Grindelwald in the first movie, sort of, so this is kind of like, it's really just four movies, it was just revealed at the end, it's like when they do crappy cliffhangers, or crappy crossovers on TV, like, these four shows, and it's like, a person just went in at the end of one episode, like, you're in this crossover now, and it's like, well, that's not a crossover, that's just like the last two minutes, that's kind of what the first Fantastic Beast movie is, it was like, Grindelwald was in it, it was like, that didn't, they talked about it a lot, but it didn't matter in the first movie, so, they got four movies and it's kind of like they started over you know it's like the first one again because it was a lot of build up um but i am looking forward to the next one because i feel like they can do some really good stuff especially like specifically with the way the movie ended i was like all right that's admittedly i thought was like a super cool way to end the movie like they did a really epic thing for me personally and i was like well that i think is cool which um kind of leads into one of my favorite elements about this movie that i thought was insanely well done oddly uh foreshadowing there is a buttload of foreshadowing in this whole movie. There's like everything you see almost like when they have a specific element, it's all foreshadowing. And some of it is just random. Like it's just conjecture. Like ah, that thing happens and this is something I know. And it's like all of that stuff ends up being foreshadowing. And I was like, well, that's actually super, super cool. Like some elements is super obvious. It's like, all right, well, what what's that? It makes you ask a giant, giant question. But some stuff is legitimately just like, meh, there's a thing. And it ends up being foreshadowing later on in the movie. And I was like, they, there's stuff I know, like, when it goes through, there were probably, like, four or five things where I was like, that showed up earlier in the movie, and, like, as soon as I see something and I get the answer, I was like, 
they talked about that in the beginning or they you know like i said some things are super obvious where it's like what was that big thing and so you get the reveal so like some stuff is you know super obvious foreshadowing but some stuff isn't but all of it is really well done because you ask the question but they don't answer it immediately and so you kind of forget because there's so many other questions that pop up but a lot of them do get answered and i was like well that's actually super cool so i love the foreshadowing because it was just something where i was like i don't know if that was just like a big point that they were trying to make but it was it just worked really well to me and I, I like good foreshadowing especially when it's like it was foreshadowed and you can remember it within that time span it makes it even more entertaining like in the moment and it's cool to find stuff out later but it's just like well that's super cool like you you see it later and then you're like oh that that's interesting so i really love that but i still say if you want to see it see the movie i don't think you'll like hate it or anything like that i know some people didn't like the first one so you probably won't like this one but i know some people that didn't like the first one as much did like this one a bit more so honestly it's almost impossible for me to tell where you might range i like the first one more than this one but that's because i was so excited for the dark side of this story and i felt it didn't push as hard as i wanted it to it just had those bits and pieces that i loved and it was like ah and there was just a lot of extra where i was like man ah, just cut you know just cut some of this stuff out but i you know go see it i mean we got three more movies they it's warner brothers and then it's Harry, the Harry Potter universe. Like those two things combined, they have like eight trillion dollars. They're gonna make the next three movies no matter what. Um, so check it out. You might as well because you're gonna see the next one just like I am. But um, that is you know the end of the spoiler free section. So officially going into spoilers. Uh, the first thing I want to get into is the very ending of the film, uh, which was one of those minor bits of foreshadowing where it was just referenced. Dumbledore is like, you know, it's a legend that you know the Phoenix will come to whoever needs it, which I thought was just a cool reference to be like, oh, you know, Dumbledore gets the Phoenix in one of the movies. That's just a random little reference. That's what I thought they were doing with that line, where it's like, you know, it said that we get Phoenixes sent to us when we need them the most. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He had a Phoenix in the movie, so he really needed one. That's sweet. And then it's like, nope, that's actually because um Ezra Miller's character who I, I totally can't remember his like the fake name that they that he had because it wasn't his real name um we find out that he's actually a Dumbledore and I thought that was actually a great way to end the movie where I was like well that's super exciting he gets his own wand which admittedly was a super sweet wand like just the jet black I thought that looked cool and we find out that this bird that he's been feeding this whole time this is a tiny little thing was actually a phoenix the whole time and I was like well that's actually super cool too like that's one of the, my favorite things where it was like just little stuff where it was like, oh, he's feeding this bird because he's that character where it's like, oh, I'm going to help this lonely little thing because I'm a lonely little thing. And it's like, oh, that little thing was actually a phoenix the whole time to help you become something grandiose. And I was like, well, that's actually cool. That I thought was great writing. So I love that. Um, the foreshadowing that they did with uh, Lestrange, I thought was pretty cool where, you know, they show like this thing where it's like, what is that? Like falling through the sky. And then we find out later it was actually... Um, her brother who she actually killed which came during the whole ridiculous mega exposition dump which i just was like crazy like them going through it like i knew they had the references of like they're kind of searching because it's like their references that um credence might actually be your brother if i'm remembering his name right um it's like you know he might actually be your brother it's like is, that's not possible like my brother's dead and stuff like that and it's like okay you know like she's saying this stuff and then it's revealed it's like you know i was born and then Lestrange basically like magic raped my mom which I thought was a crazy thing that they put in there I was like that's super duper effing dark but you know that happened and so it was like you know he stole my mom my dad went crazy he dies I have to get revenge so you are my half sister because Lestrange had you with my mother and then he also had another child who's this guy who was given up and all this other stuff and it's like wait a minute you're wrong extra exposition story and then it was just like okay so they switched their birth and then the magic kid is dead and then it turns out that they just had like a normal kid who wasn't actually a normal kid because the woman who died was a Dumbledore and there were a whole random set of things where I was like what was going on there like weren't they all you know I mean Dumbledore I guess weren't always famous until you know Albus Dumbledore um but it was just like well what was going on there like what happened in that moment what was going on so I thought that was interesting. One thing that I also found interesting was like, how the F did uh, Grindelwald know that he was a Dumbledore? Like, did he look up the manifest and find that that woman used the same fake name all the time and it was actually a Dumbledore that always did that? I was super confused. I was like, that's cool. I love the reveal, like I said. But I was like, how did he know that? Because there was nothing else to say that he was magic in any way, shape, or form. He's this very rare magical thing. 
And then it's just like, well, how did he get the Dumbledore part? Like, unless he knew that the bird was a phoenix, and that's how he figured it out. But I was just confused. I was like, how did he learn this? Because then, after the mega exposition dump, Credence was nothing again. It was just like, well, then who the F is this guy? He's nobody, and he's just this crazy magical creature whose mom died. And I thought that was it. I was like, well, that kind of sucks. Like, we, that whole movie was leading up to this thing where he was trying to figure out who he was, and we got nothing, and then it's revealed. And I was still kind of like, well, how did he know that was the answer, though? I was confused. Um, still enjoyed it, like I said, but I was just like, huh, that's weird. Um, like I said, as far as stuff I didn't enjoy as much, I thought the pacing wasn't as entertaining. Like, it just... There were literally three action sequences, beginning, middle, end, and everything in between that was just talking minute magical use, or they went somewhere magical, so technically it was magic. And it was just like, eh. You know, it was just like, man, that that's, it's just kind of not as entertaining. It's not as fun. It's not as whimsical. Um, when they go to Hogwarts, of course, that was cool. They play, like, the original theme. That was sweet. Um, I just got to give them that, because that was just a fun moment. And there's literally someone, like, in the seat, because I went to watch it, like, at a premiere night on Thursday. And when they did that, like, I saw the person, like, so I tried not to laugh, because they were, like, a few seats down. And then the theme came on, and they were, like, I saw them out of the side. They were just like, yeah, like, they were, like, with their friend. And they were just like, yeah, like, it's the theme. And I was just like, I just got to focus on the movie. But it was really funny to me. Like, they got super amped. Um, but that was definitely a good, a cool moment. Dumbledore was awesome in this. Um, and of course it is revealed at the end where it was like, you know, they were, you know, in love and that they made that, um, the, basically a blood pact that they wouldn't hurt each other. And then it's like, surprise, you actually have to follow that because, you know, the guy that you loved turned out to be a total douchebag who wants to kill everybody, even though you're a good guy. So I was like, ah, I just, I just can't. So, you know, they get the key at the end and, um, you know, that'll be broken. I would assume not in the next movie. I would say it's probably going to be broken. If it, if it is in the next movie, it'll be like the end of the next movie. And then that'll start like the last two movies will be the grand battle, which I think would be fine. Um, but they might save it for like the fourth movies when it finally gets broken. And then the fifth movie is just like straight chaos and just battle. It'll be like the last Harry Potter movie. Um, but yeah, all in all, still enjoyed the movie. Um, I like that the characters are back, even though it doesn't make sense. In the case of uh, Credence, it was just dumb. It was like, yeah, he survived. He's actually in Paris. What the F? No explanation how he survived. No reason as to why they didn't capture him beforehand. They knew he was in Paris. How did he come back? I mean, they were the whole thing, like, there were like a billion freaking magical people. And it's just like, how did that, how did they not know that he was alive? And they just, boom, instantly capture him. It just didn't make sense. They don't give an explanation either. So it was just like, that's just bad. He's just alive and that's it um of course they just get the old characters back because those are like the main cast members so that's just how it works uh queenie i thought had a cool storyline i wish that was expanded just a little bit but i like the fact that she did turn evil um they just needed like a little more for that because it was like they had the one scene where she freaks out and then grindelwald doesn't actually kill her and that was pretty much it and it was like well they needed like maybe one extra scene or something like that like maybe where or, you know obviously you have Newt running around basically with his best buddy who's totally human they could have just had something there where they find each other at a different part in the movie but then they get torn apart because like well he's human in this magical situation we gotta like either obliviate him or flat out kill him which they wouldn't randomly do that but you know we need to wipe his memories again or something like that and then you know you're gonna be jailed or whatever Queenie for wanting to marry him and getting him in this situation all this other stuff they just needed like one extra scene and that was pretty much it I felt but I still like that fact I'm excited for where that's headed in the next movie um everything else I thought was cool those freaky demon cats I thought that was super cool visually I just thought that was fantastic um and I, I feel like that's pretty much it like I, I like what we got to see I like the opening action sequence even though I hate dark scenes in the rain and thunder I was like I can't see a lot of this stuff so that upset me but that's just that always happens it'll be a cool sequence <clears throat> excuse me but you just miss a lot it's just dark and then you know you got flashes where it's just like all right that was blindingly bright and then boom it's dark again so it's basically pitch black after it happened it's just like i'm missing stuff but that's fine ultimately cool sequence i love the part where they go across the water and he basically uh uses a, uses a spell to like absorb the water into the cabin i actually thought that was a really cool sequence to like capture the guy but that was cool um Fun movie, though. Would love to know what you guys thought about it, so please put your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. Did you like this more than the last movie? Are you excited for the next movie? What was missing? What should have been changed? What should have been done better? What should have been stretched out? What should have been shortened? I would love to know what you guys thought about this. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.